Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Bill Chase and the Movies and this week I got five, count them, five big movies for you this week and starting it off, Teen Heartthrob Zac Efron stars in one of those old, old guy becomes young again, body switcheroo films, this one is called Seventeen Again. These concepts were done to death in the 80s, however, there was one big gold standard, and that is of course the Tom Hanks classic, Big, which actually put Hanks on the map as a serious Hollywood player earning him his first Oscar nomination. And oh yes, it was also a great film. While well, Seventeen Again certainly isn't great, it certainly isn't bad at all. Actually, hardly any of it's bad. The movie is about Mike O'Donnell, a 37-year-old man whose marriage is completely falling apart. Now, the 37-year-old version is played by the man we all know as Chandler Bing, Matthew Perry. Now, he isn't able to talk to his kids and have to, or even relate to them, and he's he's on the verge of a divorce. Now, he after reminiscing about his past, he wishes he could be 17 again. And this is what I really like about this movie. It was one of the best slices of continuity I've seen in a long time, where he wasn't very specific. Rather than wishing to go back in time to when he was 17, he's just a 37-year-old man, trapped within his own 17-year-old body. <laughs> same problems, same wife, same same kids, same problems. It's, <laughs> it's pretty crazy, and that's, that's what I really like about this film. And he just puts himself in one giant mess. Now, in the midst of all this mess, he turns to his best friend, Ned, played by Thomas Lennon, in a very funny performance. It was downright hilarious. Who will now have to pose as his father to enroll him in school, which creates some very funny scenes because, well, Ned is in love with the principal. Mike is very out of place in his high school life, his new high school life, so to speak. And we pretty much know the awkwardness is coming, like those early scenes in the Drew Barrymore film, Never Been Kissed. Now, the makers of this film still managed to do it in a very funny way. Eventually, Mike becomes friends with his own son, who is a shy, awkward outcast in many ways. And there's one funny scene, despite its ridiculous lack of continuity, is when Mike's wife, played by the always funny and always great Leslie Mann of the Judd Apatow films, says he looks strangely a lot like the boy she once knew in high school and ended up marrying. Hmm. And the explanation Mike gives is just downright ridiculous, but still very funny. Now, once Mike gets into the groove of high school again, he becomes a star bas in basketball, and while he's already befriended his son, he tries to attempt to defend his daughter Maggie, uh, from who is played by Michelle Trachtenberg, who some of you may remember from Euro Trip or the Buffy the Vampire series, or Buffy the Vampire Slayer series, sorry. And uh, and he tries to defend her from her, you know, jerk jock boyfriend. We need one of those in this film. And the weird thing is, is that when I was last in high school, which was in 2002, and I know it was seven years ago, but still, I don't remember any of the gothy, punk, emo, slash rocker girls or whatever ever being with any high school jock. I mean, I still have a lot of cousins who are in high school, and <laughs> they, they, they said none of that goes on. But since the scenes are handled in such a good way, I can overlook that. The fact, the, the fact is, is that this movie is pretty much a rehash of most of the body switch genre for the first little while, but even in those scenes, I was still laughing a lot. The stereotypes and the lack of continuity are there, but yet there's a little splice of originality here. I love how, despite the fact that he's a 17-year-old, like now he's a 17-year-old, he still tries hard to be a father to his kids, and who are now his high school peers, and in a funny twist of irony, he wanted a, relate, a way to relate to them, now he has found it. Now, uh, a, lot, a, lot of the, a lot of the girls watching this are probably wondering, well, what did you think of Zac Efron? Well, he did quite well here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I and I won't fault his acting abilities. I said before I liked him in Hairspray, but I still don't think Efron has truly stepped into the shell of the teen beat genre quite yet, and I don't even know if he's ready to. This is indeed a PG-13 movie, but teens and kids alike will go see it because of the fact that Efron is a star, just like Will Smith will draw his audience no matter what his movie is rated. For his sake, for for Efron's sake, I hope he does break out of this shell because I do actually see potential in him, and I actually look forward to. Uh, What's uh, what's on the horizon for him? I can't say enough about Thomas Lennon here, or even uh, Melora Hardin, who plays the principal, and uh, and and they are both very well cast here. Um, as is Leslie Mann. Um, Matthew Perry is also very effective here, uh, as are Michelle Trachtenberg and Sterling Knight as the kids. So for being fun and a very surprising time at the movies, I'm recommending Seventeen again and giving it three stars out of five.